In the late 50s and early 60s, a drastic shift in American culture was aroused by the uprising of music legends such as Elvis Presley, Buddy Holly, and Chuck Berry. Whether you consider this change to be positive or negative, it is indisputable that a powerful new force had been introduced to the world in the form of rock and roll. This teen phenomenon would prove to be a lasting influence on society. If you combine sales from concert tickets, musical instruments, CDs, and digital music downloads, music is roughly a $36 billion a year industry. Considering there are approximately 743,000 guitar players in the United States alone, a great deal of this industry's success can be traced back to one of the greatest innovators in guitar history. Clarence Leonidas Fender, commonly known as Leo Fender, is an individual in history who not only worked his entire life to make a difference in music and respectively the world, but who also laid the foundation for millions of others to do the same. Leo Fender was born August 10, 1909, in Fullerton, California. He spent a great deal of his childhood in his uncle's shop, where he was fascinated by the radios his uncle built from scratch. In 1938, during the Depression, after losing several accounting jobs in San Luis Obispo, Leo Fender moved back to Fullerton with his wife, Esther Kloski, and $600 he borrowed to start the first of many companies he would found, Fender Radio Service. The company specialized in PA systems, amps, and steel guitars. This was the initial action taken by Leo Fender that would lead to his now thriving legacy in the music industry. When Leo began his first amp designs, World War II was raging. Leo took note of the durability circuits had to have to withstand the harsh conditions of military life. He transferred this concept to his amp designs, figuring that traveling musicians may need a similar quality of equipment for their own rugged lifestyles. Among these designs were the deluxe, professional, and the dual professional amps. Fender's lines of amps were the most powerful and high quality amps being commercially produced and caught on with musicians immediately. A short time later, Leo introduced the Champion Practice Amp Series, which experienced even more popularity than his first designs. While Leo was making huge advances in amp technology, commercially produced guitars with amplification capabilities were still limited to acoustics with pickups added on. It was around this time that Leo began making designs for his first electric solid body guitar. It should be noted that Leo Fender is not the individual responsible for the invention of the solid body guitar. The original designer is still unknown. We do know that in 1935, Rickenbacker had patented a solid body guitar made from Bakelite, a predecessor to plastic, and that just 15 miles from Fullerton, another designer, Les Paul, was working on his own idea for a solid body guitar that he called the Log. None of these designs, however, would experience the commercial availability of Leo Fender's first guitar, the Fender Esquire. Introduced in 1950, the Esquire was carefully designed to be easy to amplify with a high quality of sound. This set it apart from most other guitars of the time. A few months later, Fender added an improved model of the Esquire he called the Broadcaster. After the release of the Broadcaster, Fender received a telegram from the Gretsch Musical Instrument Company complaining that Leo Fender's use of the name Broadcaster for his guitar interfered with their line of drum sets sold under the same name. Fearing legal action, Fender immediately stopped manufacturing his guitars with the name Broadcaster and sold them without a label until he could come up with another suitable name. Guitars during this time, sold without a label, came to be known as the No-Casters and are purchased by modern-day collectors for as much as $50,000. Fender eventually settled on the name Telecaster for his guitar a name inspired by another popular invention of the time, the television. The release of his first line of guitars, however, would continue to cause controversy for Fender. After seeing the Esquire, another designer, Paul Bigsby, claimed to be the guitar's actual designer. According to Bigsby, he let Fender borrow his guitar for two days, and the Esquire was released just two weeks later. Among other similarities between the two guitar designs was the vibrato unit. While Bixby's claim never attracted much public attention, putting a Bixby vibrato unit on a Fender guitar is still considered bad luck by some guitarists. Despite these controversies, Fender's first line of guitars enjoyed huge popularity, especially in the country genre, where their distinct twangy sound became a standard in country music. Leo Fender's next innovation in musical instruments would be on bass guitars. 
Up to this point in history, bass technology was limited to the double, otherwise known as the upright bass. They were large instruments that were easily broken and very difficult to amplify. This left ample opportunity for Leo Fender to make yet another huge step forward in musical technology. In 1951, Leo Fender introduced the Precision Bass, followed by the Bassman Amp, designed for high-quality bass amplification. Although the Precision Bass was used primarily in jazz and big bands in its early life, it would go on to make its biggest impact on music in pop, blues, and rock and roll. Much of modern-day music simply wouldn't be possible without Fender's bass design, because it allows musicians to vary their playing styles and move about the stage while performing. From there, Fender returned his attention to designing and improving the quality of electric guitars. Since the release of the Telecaster, despite its popularity, Fender did receive some complaints about the guitar's design. Some guitars didn't like the trademark twangy sound of the Telecaster, and also complained about its sharp edges digging into their sides while playing for long periods of time. With these complaints in mind, Fender began his designs for the Stratocaster, which was released in 1954. As well as making some advances in guitar quality, Fender made even bigger advances in the manufacturing of guitars. Leo Fender's method of manufacturing really uh, changed the, the entire availability of, of guitars into the marketplace. Um, Tom Wheeler, who is an author, uh, was quoted as saying that, that Leo Fender was the, um, the Henry Ford of electric guitars, and, and I think that probably puts it best. The Fender Strat was the first guitar to be mass-produced. One guitar used to take a skilled craftsman 80 to 100 hours to make. Fender's assembly line process allowed several guitars to be finished by semi-skilled laborers in a matter of 5 to 7 hours. This both reduced the price and increased the availability of quality guitars. Over the next eight years, Fender continued to work on designs and improvements for musical instruments. He worked late into the night, often seven days a week. By the mid-60s, he was completely exhausted and in failing health. In 1964, Columbia Broadcasting System, also known as CBS, approached Leo Fender, looking to become involved in the music industry by buying his company. At the end of the year, Fender sold his beloved company for $13 million. Along with selling his company, Fender also made an agreement with CBS that he would not participate in the musical instrument industry for 10 years after the sale. After the 10-year agreement was up and in improved health, Fender returned to the musical instrument industry as president of Music Man Inc., but left the company in 1985 after 10 years of slowly declining success. Leo then teamed up with longtime friend George Fullerton to found G&L Guitars. It was with this company that Leo Fender worked to refine the designs he had originally created, quite literally, to the end of his days. Fender went to work all the way up to the day before his death on March 21, 1991, despite having small strokes and suffering from advanced Parkinson's disease. Even after his death, Leo Fender's legacy continues through those who have made and those who will continue to make a difference in society through music with Fender guitars, basses, and amps as their tools. Throughout history, influential artists such as Jimi Hendrix, The Beatles, Eric Clapton, Bob Dylan, and Kurt Cobain have chosen guitars designed by Leo Fender as a means of exposing their music to the world. Another legacy of Leo Fender can be found in the accomplishments of one of the companies he founded. Fender Musical Instruments remains one of the most thriving guitar companies in the world, not only for its financial successes and product quality, but also for its unceasing involvement in music education. The Kids Rock Free program, founded under the Fender Company, has provided thousands of children in the United States with free music lessons and performance opportunities since its creation in 1998. Music is one of the most powerful influences over society, as it continues to play its role as a means of expression, comfort, and hope to people everywhere, we can trace the existence of a great deal of this art being made possible, in part, by Leo Fender.